All right, so step one, we're going to do the setup. So this is the crap you need. When you look at your Blake more, they come packaged with these plugs. And these things are ridiculous. If this has been sitting here for any length of time, they get wedged in there and you can't get them out. And this one I had already pre-loosened, but sometimes they're really jammed in there. And if that's the case, you're going to be already really upset because your patient's crapping out. you got to wedge a small Kelly in between that plug and the Blakemore and run it around 360 degrees and then the plugs will come out. And what you want to do is you want to mark two spots on the Salem sump. You want to mark about a couple centimeters above the uh, gastric balloon and you mark that at the 50 centimeter mark on the Blakemore. And so we'll mark that and we'll call it gastric. And then you want a couple of centimeters above the esophageal balloon. And again, you mark that at 50 on the Blakemore. And we'll call that esoph. All right, so now I got one mark that says esophagus. I got another mark that says gastric. All right, so you have the one with the one three-way stopcock on the Christmas tree adapter. There's a saline lock cap there. And that one goes into the gastric port. I'm going to wedge that in. Nice and tight, it doesn't need to come out. And then you can have another one with a Christmas tree adapter, two three-way stopcocks, and a uh, cap on it. That's going to go into the esophageal balloon. Now, we could test the gastric by putting in 250 cc's of air. And just for the sake of this demonstration, we'll just do it twice so you don't have to sit here and wait. And you want to make sure balloon is not leaking. Then fully deflate that gastric port. To the point where it's totally involuted. Then we'll test out the gas, the uh, esophageal balloon. This one only needs about 70 cc's air total. So we'll test it with like 80 or 90. Looks good. Now we'll fully deflate that one. All right, so now that one's totally flat. All right, now we're going to lube the hell out of it. Get the balloons too. Okay. All right, so now we're actually ready to insert the Blakemore. Now, this just goes in like an NG tube. If you have any problems, use a laryngoscope to help you get that stuff out of the way. But you're just going to come in. You'd obviously be wearing gloves. Insert until you get to 50 centimeters at the lips and make sure the markings are facing the patient's right. That just orients the balloon properly. So 50 centimeters and then you're going to check if it's in the stomach. Okay, once you think you have it in, now what you want to do is actually uh, get your slip syringe and insufflate through the gastric lavage port while someone auscultates over the stomach and then do it again while they auscultate over the lungs and make sure it's in the stomach. And uh, sometimes they'll even hook up the end tidal CO2 to it temporarily and give a couple breaths and make sure there's no end tidal CO2 coming back either. This tells me at the very least it's not in the lung. We're going to put 50 cc's of gas into the gastric balloon just to keep it there from popping back out. So we'll come on over to this port. We'll turn it away from the patient. And we'll just put in 50 cc's. And right, we'll turn it off to the patient. Now we're going to get an x-ray and make sure that balloon is sitting below the patient's diaphragm in the stomach before we do any further inflation. Once we've confirmed by x-ray, we'll come back to the gastric port. And now we're going to put another 200 cc's of gas in for a total of 250. Two more. 
This should go in nice and easy. And then turn it off to the patient. All right, so we got 250 cc's of gas in there. Now we want to apply traction. So you start pulling this out until it starts wedging against the esophageal gastric junction. Then you're actually going to apply traction onto the Blakemore itself. The way to do that is you just open up your Curlex and you know you're gonna make one of those slip knots. Pull that tight. And then get an IV pole. And you're going to suspend it with a liter of saline. It's going to apply exactly one kilogram of force to the blade point. Okay, once you got the traction on and the tube is uh, pulling up against the GE junction, you're now going to mark it where it pops out at the level of the lips. Just put a black mark there. Now, as the tube warms up, it might move out a little bit, but if it's moving more than just an inch or so, then you've got to be worried it's actually pulling out through the GE junction. The patient has a hiatal hernia. You've got to get an x-ray. So now... What we could do is first put on suction to this distal port. It's marked uh, gastric aspirate. We could suck out all the blood. And so we get all that blood out. Once that's all out, now we'll lavage with some saline. We really wash out the stomach and suck again and see if there's any active bleeding coming from below that balloon. Now, at this point, we want to see if there's any bleeding from above. So we have our pre-marked saline sunk. And we're going to advance this to that mark we put for gastric right there, just alongside the Blakemore. And we'll put that on suction as well to see if there's any active bleeding now coming from the esophagus. Now, and we'd secure that obviously. Now, if there's no bleeding, then we'll just let this sit until either endoscopy comes or the patient gets tips. But let's say they're still bleeding, endoscopy has either told us they can't do anything or um, they, uh, they haven't arrived yet. You don't want to inflate the esophageal portion. So you're going to pull back the Salem sump to where it says esophagus right there. That's going to tell you that it's now above the esophageal balloon. And now you're going to inflate the esophageal port, which is more complicated because it's a pressure-based system for inflation. So what you're going to do is... You gotta get a stigma monometer. And now ours happily fits into a saline lock. Like so. And the way we have this configured is this is now facing away from the patient. So this port is open. And now we're gonna put this port so it's open all three ways. And now we can actually inflate until the stigma monometer says 30. Now, this one won't because we, this is for demonstration purposes. We're not going to get that to move. It won't stay. But it would stay at 30 when you put in about 60, 70 cc's of air. And at that point, turn it off to the patients. Now you have it on 30 millimeters mercury. If they're still bleeding, which you'll know from your Salem sump, you could actually put in enough to get them to 45 It'll stay there, obviously, in real life, and turn that off. Beyond 45, you don't inflate anymore. And you can turn this one off, too, so you don't lose pressure, and just check the pressure intermittently. And that's essentially it. So this is our favorite tube securing system. It's the ETAD by Hollister. I don't take money from these guys. I just think it's a brilliant system. And that's what holds our ET tubes in nice and tight. Well, what I discovered is you can actually take a second of these little rail devices from a, another ETAD and actually put that on the rails as well, like so. And now, since you have that, you can actually take your Blakemore while it's under tension from the IV bag and actually secure that to that same 
Hollister system and then actually take them off the traction. So it makes everything so much easier. I use this same thing for uh, securing epistaxis catheters or anything that needs to stay in the mouth because it has these nice little grips here, these little uh, spikes. So now this is still held under tension, but we don't need that whole rigmarole hanging off the wall.